and welcome to Watch It Paint It. This video we're going to be painting another model from Zombicide, Green Horde, Seaman Games. This is Anton Guffin, is that how you say it? What's with this guy? Why has he got two names? Don't they normally only have one name? It seems a bit weird to me. Anybody know that? I'll let me know in the comments. Just showing you the model to begin with, just to let you know, this was picked by Phil on my Patreon. He's got request right and it lets him pick a model every month and this is the one he's picked this month if you've not checked out my patreon please do so it's financially supporting but it's more than more than that it's moral support i really really appreciate the the support you guys give me uh, and financially for instance my headphones are broken i'm just finding that out recording the audio for this i can't hear myself anymore so hopefully this is recording okay but i won't know until i play it back at the very very end uh, so i now have to buy some headphones just an example of the sort of stuff that happens to us youtubers anyway what I also did, using some of this uh, support, is I am trying out Vallejo's Metal Medium. So I, I didn't own this before. I bought it especially for this video, especially to try and show you guys, because I've not even heard of it. I stumbled across it and thought, well, let's give this a try. And what this is supposed to do, it's a medium that you mix in with paint, or use with paint, I should say, and it's going to make it look metallic. Now, Vallejo recommend two ways of using this. One is to base coat the model first in the color you want, and then to paint this translucent metal medium over the top. And the alternative one is mixing it about 50-50. Uh, I tried out both. I did some test runs before I made this video. And I found mixing it 50-50 to be much better. What I did find is you, you have to thoroughly mix this. I mean proper, 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 proper mix. Mix it. And then when you think you're done, mix it some more. So I've added just a smidge of water just to water all of this down. And then I'm using a cheap brush because this is going to go everywhere. And I'm going to mix and mix and mix and mix and mix and mix. Like, like we're talking mi a minute of mixing these two together, making sure and looking very closely to make sure it's pr like thoroughly mixed. I found in my tests that it looked rubbish. And I think that's just because I didn't mix it well enough. I just, you know, like when I normally mix something just nice and quick and get on with it. But, you know, I'm still mixing now. So I'm showing you, hopefully demonstrating this is actually important if you do use this. Let's see how I get on as we go through the video. Um, and I'm just going to use my cheap brush, as I've done in quite a few of my previous videos. I'm trying to drum into you that, because I, nobody drummed this into me, that everyone just said avoid cheap brushes and actually don't avoid them, have some, and use them for stuff that just doesn't matter. So, for instance, here, just applying a mixing is one thing, and then applying a base coat is the second thing. You know, this is, I'm not, I'm not, not being accurate. I'm using Vallejo's game color and that Vallejo medium. So this model's not primed. But this game color sticks, uh, it does the base coat and the prime all in one go. And I'm just not, you know, I'm going to cover the whole thing. This guy is mostly yellow, so I'm just smashing it on. And this is going to take multiple coats. I'm going to start by doing the whole thing. Off cam, I'm not going to show you on camera over and over again, but this is like three or four coats to get this guy. Yellow's a difficult color to paint. Uh, if you are looking for some cheap brushes, if you haven't got any and you're in no rush, quick draw supplies, do supply them. There's a link in the description below. These are about 10 cents each and they do worldwide postage. They've supported the channel in the past, so I'm more than happy to try and support them back. Just showing you what he looks like now after I've done, as I mentioned, three or four coats. Nice and yellow. I don't know if that comes across on, on the camera super well, but it's really metallic. Like in real life, you can see the light glistening off of him. It looks like I've used a yellow metal. It looks actually quite close to gold. So to some extent, I was like, should I just use gold? Would that have achieved the same? Next is rough iron. And now I'm switching to my Rosemary & Co brush. This is the first time I've used this brush in super anger. So I use this single brush. This is the um, three slash zero. And I use this for the rest of the model. And it is fantastic. I, I, I thought it was absolutely perfect. It was the right size for this model. It kept its point all the way through. It soaked up enough paint that it was really, really easy to paint. I was very, very impressed with this. So hopefully I'm heading towards being able to do a review of paintbrushes. Do let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in hearing a little bit about all these paintbrushes compared side to side. So I'm also going to be using that rough iron to paint on the chain that's wrapped around his arm. And then I'm going to do all these, um, his undergarment, I guess you call it. It looks like he's sort of wearing chain mail under his big plate mail so he's got some elbow joints some shoulder joints and the back of his knees as well just various places in the artwork that i could tell speaking of the artwork i know in my unboxing video i thought this was a power ranger it does look a bit like a yellow power ranger right like i don't think that was too far-fetched but somebody did tell me it's actually supposed to be iron man uh which is infinitely cooler and explains why some of the paint jobs i've seen were sort of like red and yellow this can look really fantastic so that's if you know i'm a stickler 
to the artwork. So I'm obviously going to try and paint it as close to the artwork as I can. But if you're not, you know, you could try a bit of red and yellow metallic instead. Mix it up, make him look like Iron Man. Uh, next, jump suit shader. So you could use just some red paint for this. I thought because it's a yellow base coat and jumpsuit's just so watered down to begin with, I'm just going to put a little bit of this so it runs into that plate on his chest and fills in all those gaps. I'm also going to get the bit on his hand where you could see a bit of red lighting from whatever. I also covered the his um, mace in it because I wasn't 100% sure what I'm going to do with that mace at this point. This you sort of watching me guess my way through this, so I was considering making it go red, but you'll see in a minute. I'm also going to do very similar with Survivor Shader. That's the black sh shader, black wash by Army Painter. And I'm just going to let that run into those recesses in his eyes, just give him those two black eyes like he's got in the artwork. And then for the final highlight, uh, shade. For the final shade, now I'm not 100% sure what I should have done here. And I will welcome comments below if you've got any better suggestions for people what to do here. You'll see I'm using light shade. I'm still using that very, very small detail brush, my Rosemary Co., and I'm just going to very, very carefully paint in the the shadow, basically on all of the bumps. Just this is watered down. Should mention that I don't often water down my washes, but I did this about fifty fifty. I wanted a really, really light, subtle shade, uh, barely noticeable, really. Um, but as I, as I said, I welcome alternatives because I'm not hundred percent sure this was the the best idea. Wait till the end, you know. Uh, I don't want to spoil I, uh, how it looks at the end, but I, I don't think it's bad. But there could definitely be better ways. This was the only bit um, I'm unconfident in. I'm making sure I'm getting a lot more of it sort of on his knee pads. He's got lots of gaps in his knee pads, and I really wanted those to pop out. Same on his, uh, his shoes as well, the bottom, but there's a couple of lines. I wanted them to stand out. The back of his helmet, he's got a few creases down that as well. I was trying to get that to sit in there and just bring out a little bit of that detail. After that, we're going to go into the highlighting. And for this, I'm going to be painting on the silver. So this guy is yellow armor with silver trim. So I'm going to be starting with machine gun metal. I'm going to paint on that face plate. And then I'm going to be painting on the sort of strap that's round it that looks the same color, holding that on as well. And he's got this sort of line down the, the top of his head as well. And then across his, across his body and all over him, really, there's just loads and loads of raised stripes, bits to paint in. There's just tons. So I looked at the artwork and you can't see his legs or some of him. There's bits that you can't do, but you can sort of see that there's raised bits all over him on his gloves, shoulder pads, on his back, there's the same. So this really, really took a lot of time. One thing that I thought was interesting doing this model is he, he wasn't getting far off how long it took me to do the dragon. And as I mentioned, if you watched last week's video when I painted the feral dragon, I was complaining that I don't think I like large miniatures that take a really long time. However, this guy took a long time and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So I think what I'm noticing there is I don't like large miniatures, miniatures that aren't particularly skill intensive. The dragon had some skillful parts, but it was doing the same thing over and over and over and over. Whereas this guy, well, I guess this guy's still doing like the same thing over and over, painting on those lines, but it was really skill intensive. It was hard to be bored because I had to concentrate nonstop and be really, really careful painting on each one of those uh, machine gun metal silver lines. Now, on camera, you just see me go over them quickly. I sort of put, paint a thin line on each. And then off camera, you've got to remember they're 3D. And I'm using the hobby holder here. I needed maximum grip. You've not seen me use that on camera. I'm trying to avoid it just because it blocks your view slightly. But this guy, you know, how else am I going to keep my hands still enough? So I've got them pressed, both my wrists are pressed onto the desk, keeping my hands as steady as they can be. I'm using the grip as much as I can just to steady both of my hands so I can get these lines as straight and accurate as I can. But off camera, yeah, I'm painting the two other edges. You know, these are 3D lines. So you want, if you want your model to look better, you're going to have to paint the top and bottom of them. It does eat time, but it's going to be worth it in the end. But again, like you can skip that. Like, are you going to look closely at this model? Is anybody going to notice? I obviously I'm doing videos for you. I want to show you this stuff and I do pick them up a fair bit. So sometimes I do really, really care. I wanted this guy to look fantastic. After that machine gun metal's dried, I'm going to do the highlights with the Claymore Blade by Army Painter. So this is a lighter silver. And now I'm just going to go back over the most raised bits, the most central bits. So it's like straight down his chest straight up the middle of both of his legs, the tops of his arms, the top of his helmet, any of the raised parts you can find. 
this is just going to highlight those up and make it look like the light's just catching that. And I'm noticing as we're going through the video that I feel like the camera is struggling with how reflective this model is. He's really, really metallic. It's uh, it surprised me. I especially having done those tests of of the metal medium and how it didn't look good, then this is quite weird. So for once, I'm not quite sticking to the artwork. What I decided with the mace, I did um and ah for a while, but I just don't think I could get it to look like it was glowing red hot or whatever it's supposed to do. It looks like it was magic, a magical effect. And I can, you know, justify it to myself when I'm, when I paint a model. If it looks like a magic effect, you know, I can't paint on magic, right? Yeah, yeah, you let me off. So I just went for this just being, just being a normal mace. He's not applied the magic yet, so it's not glowing or, or whatever now. Now, if you do want to paint that molten red instead, do send me a picture. I'd love to see somebody doing that as it is depicted in the artwork. But for me, I wasn't gonna ruin a model that I'm, I was getting really, really proud of at this point. So dead blacks next. And I'm just gonna be painting. He's got like these straps, trying to make it look realistic, I guess, holding on some of these armored plates around his crotch and they're holding them all together. So I'm just painting them on black. They look so sort of black in the artwork and with the yellow, it's gonna look great anyway. So I'm not gonna apply any highlights to this. I'm just gonna leave them at matte black. And I think he's got a couple of straps on the front and one on the back as well. Just, just adding a little bit of detail, just another color as well. That's that's one problem you get with too few colors. This feels like it's maybe if I'd painted the mace with with red, maybe that'd be the third color that it needed. But the black's bringing some more interest. It just breaks up that yellow a little bit, makes it a little bit more interesting. That's not difficult to do either, so it's well worth doing. And then I'm just busting out a bigger brush just to quickly fill in the base, just painting that plain black and. You know, I do this at all, with all my heroes from Zombie Side. It's just nice, quick, and easy. But also, again, that black and yellow is going to look really nice together, really make him stand out a little bit better. I'm going to use bronze by Dark Star, just the bronze that I had to hand. Although Dark Star, well, Dark Star's bronze is my my favourite bronze so far. I think it's really, really good. But because I'm not actually going to be using it, I'm just going to be painting over it in a minute. It's irrelevant. Just any bronze will do for this. I'm going to be painting on his chest, that centerpiece, just make that nice and bronze. And also on his straps, he's got a buckle uh, and maybe the end of the strap or something. Just a couple of splashes of bronze just to make them look a little bit more realistic. And then bright gold by the army painter. I'm going to highlight up that center plate and I'm just going to add a, a small highlight to each of those buckles I put on those straps. I just had to pause making the audio then to go and get the model in front of me so I could just check the gold and the yellow differ immensely. So it's just interesting. It does make that the, you know, the work I did with the medium and the, the yellow metal worth it. Like it's completely different. Just trying to show you the model in my hand. I'm just trying to get different backgrounds to try and show you what it looks like. Super reflective. It might be a little bit difficult to see, but it looks amazing. This is, this is a really, really nice paint job. I'm very, very happy with that. Show you in the white background. You can see the difference. Like now it looks like matte and dull, but as it's spinning, you can see the sort of light reflecting off of his shoulder, off of the side. You can see it looks metallic, hopefully. This guy looks great. He's really, really good. I'm really happy with the metal medium. It wasn't expensive, four or five dollars, I think. If you've got that sort of budget, I recommend you give this a try. If you've ever got paint any colored metal, don't think you'll be disappointed. Well worth, well worth owning, you know. I think it's only come up once or twice, but I have needed to paint colored metal in the past and struggled to get the effect that I want. And I think this would have just done it. Pink armor, that sort of thing. So one thumbs up. I was going to say two thumbs up. I'd give it a try and I'm certainly going to try it a little bit more. Let me know if you'd like to see some more. And thank you very much, Phil, for picking an awesome model for me to paint. Very refreshing, something new. And if anybody would like to help me buy some new headphones because YouTubing without them is going to be difficult, do check out my Patreon. Thank you all very much for watching and there'll be another video next Friday.